In this topic, you will learn how to create a purchase request. Now, a purchase request is a document initiated by authorized users from any department in the company to identify the need to purchase a product for a given date and a defined quantity. Now, this product can be of any type, including goods to be sold, raw materials to be used for production, services, or even office equipment. Now, depending on the purchasing process in your company, the purchase request may have to go through a validation process before being approved by the purchasing department. The buyer could also be involved in approval of the purchase request, which decisions could be made on purchasing condition, supplier, price, and also lead time. And if a product has already been requested, one or many suppliers may already be identified and prices defined. In this case, it's possible to select them in the purchase request. Now, the purchase request can be created either by using the procurement suggestions generated by the material requirements planning function or manually through purchase request. Now, these steps can initiate the purchasing process but are not mandatory. Let's take a look at creating a purchase request. You need graphic adapters for a project for production. It's outside of your normal production process, so you need to put in a request to order, also to search for a supplier. To do this, we go to Purchasing Module, Purchase Request Block, and Purchase Request. We select the Entry Transaction, or the Data Entry screen, that you can customize. You look in the left list, you see all the requests that are in the system. To put in a brand new request, we click New, and we enter the details in the header. The person that's requesting it, as you can see, is required. Also, the, the request site, and we enter that information in as well. The request number is automatically generated on creation, and the date also required. Now we come to the line. The line tab allows us to enter the list of required products. You can enter the product code or part of the description. We'll try part of the description. This particular type of product is part of a contract, but we're going to order this outside of the contract. And as you can see, the product ID shows up along with the description. We could have used the ID, but we knew the description part of it. If it's unique, it will show up. We show the receiving site as we go along the line. Also, we need a requested date. When do we need the adapters? Now, this date is required. We'll say the date is going to be the 28th that we actually need the, the product. The purchasing unit of measure. The quantity, also required. The supplier, because we don't know the supplier we're purchasing it from, we're going to leave this blank. As you can see, you can request it from a specific supplier. Because it's part of a project, we could have entered the project, but we're not going to enter it at this time. And it calculates, based on the, the date we're requesting it, it calculates, based on the lead time of the project, product itself, it calculates the arrival date. Next, the net price. We don't know the price at this point. We're going to um, search out several different suppliers, so we remove the net price. If we did, if it was from a specific supplier, we would put the net price in. As mentioned earlier, this could be a products that I'm ordering. As far as the purchase type, it could be fixed assets or it could be services. Tax information is needed. And the next thing we do is create. On creation, as you can see, the request number is actually generated. Now this could be part of a what's called a signature process, meaning that it could have to go to, through one or several different people to sign off on it to give the approval. Another thing we could do is we can print this, print it and send it through normal channels, either by fax or some sort of email, or it could be something that's going to be automatically generated based on a workflow process where the person in the department would automatically receive it to approve of the purchase. In the right panel, you can see the text option there where you can add additional text to the header or text to the footer if there's additional information needed when printing or sending this out.
Now, once approved, you can order it automatically. If it was a uh, supplier was selected, I click the order button. It automatically generates an order in the purchase order function. If it's ordered, this checkbox is checked that it has been ordered. Also, if it has been approved and you're manually going to enter an order here, there's also functions to allow you to close. We'll say that it was approved. We're going to manually put in an order, but now we're going to go ahead and close it. Now, the one thing we could also do is if we had selected several different suppliers and needed to add um, additional lines for additional for the same product to get approval to get requests or requests for quotes from different suppliers, we could use the action icon here and then select a duplication of the line. It will apply the same line and then I can enter additional information to a different supplier. At this point, we don't need it. So we'll go ahead and say it was approved. And at this point, we'll go ahead and close. Now the box is checked that it's closed. So the request has been approved and now it's closed. So we would manually enter purchase orders. You can also close it with the other functions within the purchase request block. Manual closing where you can load it, enter a purchase request, and then close it manually, where it would load it and you would close each one manually. Or you can use automatic closing, where you use criteria, and it closes all purchase requests according to that criteria. And now you know how to create a purchase request.